1998, Radio Sports started and the All Blacks had this terrible run where they lost five games in a row for the first time, I think since 1949 or something. And so, you know, all of a sudden there's this radio station that public were reacting and, and so they got me on as a guest. And I remember wearing a uh, shirt that, you know, I didn't know, but it's strobed apparently. And uh, Gary Witten sat there, I remember the ex all Black captain sat there the whole time just looking at me going, you have got to be one of the biggest weirdos. Um, I'd only just come up from Wellington, so. And Stephen McIver spent the whole time telling me to shut up or move. And I spent the whole time thinking, you shut up and I'll direct this conversation because really your question's a naff. It was such fun, you know, we didn't get paid to do it. We, my, we gave Miles a little bit of money for him. Me and Miles didn't get paid. Some of the memories from that. The German episode was perhaps one of the favorites. So basically we had everything. We spoke in German, the games were Germany, they were all Germany's losses. We wore Lederhosen, we had Bratwurst, we had an Umpa band playing, and the whole episode was in German. And uh, yeah, because um, our, one of our favorite teams was Dukai Jusladen. Because you know what the Germans are like, you know. You know, the, the French, you ask the French, French is a beautiful language. You, are, you, know, like you ask you know, the French, you know, a beautiful French woman, you know, can I have a cheese sandwich? You can, yeah, la samois, c'est du fromage. I mean, it sounds as though, Ooh, la la, you ask a German for a you know, cheese sandwich. Wund die You know? TV3 had asked me to do the cricket in 1999. And so that was uh, after the first show of the House of Football. So, you know, that was my first foray onto, you know, network television. And I'm not joking, they had the specially built desk, which just happened to actually be built for a two year old, so my legs couldn't get under it. They were so tight they wouldn't buy me a jacket. I had Hamish Mackay's jacket. You remember how big this bath? Honestly, the jacket was like about like this. I moved and the jacket didn't. That's how big it was. And I had this just a screwball haircut and sat there like a thunderbird for about four months during the cricket and have never been asked ever since to do anything for TV3, ever since. And they still bring it out on Christmas tapes, apparently. After about the first year of doing radio, uh, sport, I got asked, uh, Mikey rang me up, Mike King, and asked me and said, oh, you know, um, come on the show. They're just starting it. And uh, to be honest, I was, uh, there was Mark and Matthew and Mike, I think Eric Young was the host and Phil Gifford was the other guy. And, but, you know, I was up my backside at that stage and I just thought, no, no, I didn't want to be involved in that, it's some sort of gamey show or something. I was on, you know, I was just well, for whatever reason, I just didn't think that I wanted to do it. And then um, about a year later, uh, Julie came, Julie Christie came back and asked me again and Tony was the host of that, so it's where Vichy was the host in there, so there's Mike and, sorry, yeah, Mike and Mark were still there and Matthew, you know, I was going to go on with him and uh, it ended up going for 10 years and that was just, you know, God, we used to call it free money, it was terrific, every Monday you'd meet with, you know, four, four or five other people and just go to town and it was just everything that you saw on the telly it was a million gazillions times worse off the telly. Um, you know, if, you, if Reggie was stormed out of the studio, he was stormed out. The first time he did it, I was like, where's he gone? Where's the p He's gone. That's it. He just, you know, he'd come by, he'd push bike into the studio. And he, and, but of course, he was living all our single lives vicariously. So he was just uh, telling us all kinds of beautiful stories. Absolutely nothing but praise for Julie Christie, who um, was one of the best bosses I've ever worked for. I mean, she, you know, she paid us well and um, treated us really well and we came in for an hour and a bit on a Monday and had a great time. I am in a, one of the rare uh, Caucasian men on the planet with natural rhythm. Um, you know, can move, just can feel, the, you know, and just, you know, the music, it's, it's part of me dancing. We had this terrible year that year and uh, my dad had died and uh, it was, and I remember saying to him a couple of weeks before he died that I was going to take the blinkers off and uh, stop saying no and say yes to things. Because um, that whole saying, life is too short, there's no truer saying in the world than when you watch somebody you love die. What's the worst thing that can happen? It's a dinner party story in six weeks and you make a dick of yourself on TV. Well, I've done that for 10 years for um, Game Too Hard, so I thought I'll do it. And also the other thing was is that uh, when I said yes, I rang up my mother, and she lives in Upper Hutt still, and the show's in Avalon in Lower Hutt, and she laughed for the first time since Dad had died. The only prerequisite was you couldn't finish last, and I had to be early. So that was the only two things. But it was the most unnatural thing in the world to do, just the weirdest, 
weirdest thing because if you've never danced before and just horrible Stefano would be one of the just the coolest n dirtiest grubbiest wonderful cats I've ever met in my life god he was fun first time I ever met this guy he's in a full-length bright pink fluffy dressing gown and Elvis glasses and I just thought I'm hanging with you <laughs> You look as though you're up to no good. So it's up here, isn't it? Eight years, you know, all of a sudden the bell goes and there's 800 and something thousand people watching and you're doing 45 seconds of dance. Can you do it? Can you sit there and do it? Can you do that in front of all of those people? Can you do it live? Can you do a waltz without tripping it? Well, what a thing to get your mind around, you know? And that's all it is. It's just TV, you know? It's simple as that. Um, Murray apparently said, oh, that's right, Marty likes soccer, doesn't he? So... All of a sudden, oh, well, I wonder if you'd like to host the World Cup. <laughs> so it was just like, just like that. The program was put on at a time of night where it was leading into the news, and I was, remember getting told, look, if it doesn't rate, they'll shoot you in the head in two days. <laughs> just like, well, you know, what do you do? You, 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 this has got nothing to do with me sitting there, is it? The, oh, I think the, um, the, the football was beautiful, and I think um, it just was one of those things where at the time and place people got caught up in this beautiful wave of a New Zealand team punching by the weight and overachieving, which is the greatest thing about our sport, isn't it? And and you couldn't help but love them. And and I think that um, that shared experience is the big thing, you know, where, uh, you know, because what we try to do is encourage people like, camp out in your lounge, you know, bring you, get your kids up. Even if they're awake for five minutes, my little ones, where they will remember in 15 years that they can say they were awake watching those games, whether we make it back there or not. And I just think that that whole shared experience is what probably has captured people in this World Cup as well. So that was the best, most fun I had on TV. I mean, I was as nervous as Helen. My wife said to me, um, stop being a moron and just pretend you're on the radio. Yeah. What the event is, is, a, is so much bigger than everything else. And so all you're trying to do is basically facilitate the, the event is what I look at it as. You know, and so, um, you know, it's like uh, we used to have a great boss on music radio who always used to say to us, um, uh, John Diver, who used to say to us that, you know, when you open your mouth to talk, remember there's a song sitting behind you that's actually better than what you've got to say. So if it ain't really good, shut it. And I've always thought it's a great a great way of actually you know putting it in perspective that you know you've got this event is what people tune in for they don't tune to watch us they don't tune to watch the, you know or well they they're tuning in to watch the event so what you're trying to do is just simply provide the information and 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 whatever formatics and business you've got to take care of your clients and the advertising and everything else and you know build it up with a little bit of preview and stuff like that and just to be honest about it and not to be tried too hard to be anything else and i think that thing i love about sport is that it's brilliant it's funny it's emotive it's it's weird um, and all of that happens naturally. So, you know, you don't try and do any of that. You just present the sport, because people who watch sport love sport. Let it go.